Welcome everyone. Thanks for joining our Kalamazoo Chapters presentation, an introduction to Citizens Climate Lobby. My name is Deb Fryman. I was a teenager in 1970 when Earth Day began, and I participated as a 13-year-old in a very small vigil in my hometown of Oxford, Michigan. When I moved back to Michigan three years ago from Illinois, I reconnected with my hope for the future of our Earth with the Kalamazoo chapter of Citizens Climate Lobby. In just a moment, we'll, we'll start our local presentation. After you've seen the agenda, I plan to disappear into the background as I monitor the chat. So if you have questions or comments for us, just click on the chat icon on your screen and we'll answer those at the end of the presentation. Here's an overview of what we'll cover today. First, we want to recognize the tremendous challenge that the current coronavirus pandemic presents to everyone. We acknowledge the potential that the pandemic has for bringing personal tragedy into everyone's life. We know that needs to be the top priority for everyone right now. But we still believe that climate change is, in the long run, an existential threat to humanity. Therefore, we'll continue to engage in the long-term effort needed to limit greenhouse gas emissions. The response to the pandemic has demonstrated that humans are capable of responding to a crisis that presents a clear and present danger. Responding to the threat of climate change is so much more challenging because the causes and effects can seem so far off in a distant future to some of us. In fact, large numbers of people around the world, especially those who are least responsible, have already been severely impacted by the world warming. At CCL, we will continue to devote appropriate, thoughtful, and sensitive efforts to the climate crisis. Then we'll talk about Citizens Climate Lobby, who we are and how we operate, the Energy Innovation and Carbon Dividend Act, and how you can get involved. Hi, my name is Mary Ann Renz. I'm the liaison for the Kalamazoo chapter of Citizens Climate Lobby to the Michigan 6th Congressional District. I first started in Citizens Climate Lobby in Mount Pleasant where I was a faculty member at Central Michigan University for 23 years. And soon after I retired from teaching, I was going through the farmer's market in Mount Pleasant and met people I knew who were engaged with Citizens Climate Lobby. So I got involved there. And then when I moved back to Kalamazoo, where I'd gone to high school and Western Michigan University for my undergraduate work, I still started tabling at the farmer's market wish we could be there today. Uh, and if we were there, I would tell you about Citizens Climate Lobby. First of all, that it's a nonprofit, nonpartisan organization. There's a small professional staff that's grown over the years as the number of members and the complexity of the work that we do has increased. But by and large, Citizens Climate Lobby is a grass-led advocacy group where the volunteers make the decisions and initiate actions the staff support. We're solution focused. We'll be talking later, as Deb mentioned, about the Energy Innovation and Carbon Dividend Act, a solution that we support that prices carbon. And our organization, no matter what we do, even how to respond to the coronavirus, is built on a strong set of core values. There's seven values. I'd like to talk about the first three, and the first one is optimism. Deb has mentioned how difficult the climate crisis is for people. Um, it's easy to get feeling discouraged, but CCL has an optimistic approach in part because we have a solution that we think is going to be successful in turning things around, reducing greenhouse gas emissions quickly. We not only believe in our solution, but we believe in democracy. We believe that when we talk to people about our solution, we're going to be able to be successful. We, we engage also in relationships. Even though we 
we were going to be successful, we know it's not going to happen overnight. And it's not going to happen if we demonize the people whose action we need in order to uh, initiate some legislation that's going to be effective. So we begin all of our conversations with legislators with appreciation and gratitude for the work that they're doing on behalf of their constituents. The relationships extend to the relationships we have to each other, both within our own chapter and other chapters uh, across the state, country, and world. We believe those relationships should be developed with everybody, no matter what their political position is, no matter what their age, uh, how they identify ethnically, racially, uh, in terms of sexual orientation. We really want to lift the voices of those whose voices may not have been heard. Um, they deserve a place at the table also. And I'd like now to introduce you to Rick, another of our volunteers. Thanks, Marianne. I'm Rick Fryman. I've been a volunteer with Citizens Climate Lobby Kalamazoo chapter for about three years. I'm pretending I'm down at Bronson Park right now uh, for Earth Day, which uh, would have been live. But it's kind of a silver lining that since it's kind of cold today, I guess I'm not so sad it's a virtual meeting. Uh, there's a couple more core values that I like. <clears throat> One of those is uh, focus. CCL is focused on one thing, and that is passing climate legislation in the form of carbon fee and dividend, which we'll discuss in a few minutes. After focusing and advocating for this concept for over a decade, Citizens Climate Lobby has now been successful in getting lawmakers from both political parties to sponsor a bill in the House of Representatives. The bill is called the Energy Innovation and Carbon Dividend Act. The other core value that I, I like is um, being bipartisan. We need both Democrats and Republicans to support climate action, not just to get climate policies passed and signed, but to show that both parties are invested in making these policies succeed in the long run. We respectfully engage lawmakers and groups that lean left and of center and right of center to show them how the carbon fee and dividend strategy can earn their support. This bipartisanship is the key to making laws that will last and not be reversed by the next administration. John? Hello everyone, I'm John Rozovsky. I'm a relatively new volunteer for the Kalamazoo chapter of CCL. And I'd like to describe for you our next core value, which is integrity. So integrity to, for CCL means that we are prepared and do our research. We are always on time for meetings, our approach is thoughtful and thorough. We consult experts and use data. We are open to new information. In fact, we solicit opposing opinions. We refine our solutions to make them better, and we follow up when we are asked. The next core value is personal power. For CCL, this means that we use our voices to be heard. This simple act transform, trans, transforms us from spectators to engaged citizens, and it reveals the true nature of democracy to us. We are volunteer driven, trusting volunteers to make important decisions and to create and develop things that will be valued by Citizens Climate Lobby. So those are our core values. Our mission is reflected in our motto, to build political will for a livable world. Legisla legislation that we're going to talk about explains how we're gonna build that livable world. Let's talk about how we build political will. We know that politicians don't create political will, they respond to it. So we, as citizens, need to exert our political will. We build it by using five levers of political will. All groups that are trying to uh, provide change through the political process need to use these levers. And CCL does too. The first is group development. Second, grassroots outreach. The third, grass tops outreach. The fourth, media relations. And the fifth, lobbying. Group development involves both growing the size of each chapter. So when you join our chapter, you'll help with our group development. It also involves chapter growth. 
the number of chapters. CCL was founded just 13 years ago in 2007. At the end of last year, the figures showed that in the United States, we had 180,000 plus supporters and they were in 473 chapters around the country. Worldwide, there are even more people involved. An additional 12,020 plus members in over in 110 chapters from Australia to Zimbabwe, A to Z. You might be wondering how the growth is in Michigan and there the chapters have continued to grow over the last few years. This map shows uh, blue dots for existing chapters and yellow ones for those in formation. You see that there are lots in the Illinois area and Wisconsin and to our right, the right of Michigan in Ontario, there are chapters and some in Ohio and Indiana. In Michigan, there are 20. And right now on this map, it shows a little yellow dot by St. Joe, Michigan. Actually, that dot should be turned blue. Members of the Kalamazoo chapter were excited to be able to go to St. Joe and participate in a meeting to help launch the chapter in St. Joe which is now an active chapter as well. It's not just chapter growth where CCL is creating successes. That was, remember, one of the political levers. Second one is grassroots outreach, and that involves tabling, virtual or in-person tabling, and presentation events. We do a lot of tabling in Kalamazoo, for example, at the farmer's market. Nationally, there are nearly 5,000 tabling and presentation events, or there were rather, last year in 2019. The bill that we're going to be talking about was introduced at the beginning of 2019. By the end of the year, over 15,000 business and community leaders who were approached through grass tops outreach event, uh, events by Citizens Climate Lobby volunteers, those 1,500 endorsements, and I may have said 1,000 before, uh, had take, occurred by the end of 2019. Media contacts have involved uh, media contacts made by volunteers from CCL, in the form of letters to the editor or op-eds or even um, editorials, articles, television and radio stories. Again, nearly 5,000 of those occurred last year. Lobbying is in our name, Citizens Climate Lobby, not professional lobbyists, not paid lobbyists. We're volunteer lobbyists who by and large pay our own way or have scholarship help from Citizens Climate Lobby to lobby with Congress, both in the district and in Washington, D.C. In a normal year, we would have a June lobby session. This year it's going to be virtual in D.C and a November one. And then in Kalamazoo, we have typically two meetings throughout the rest of the year in the district. CCL volunteers last year organized and held 2,729 meetings with congressional offices. The work that CCL does in lobbying has been successful. One volunteer went to Florida and worked with a de Democrat, Ted Deutsch, a representative from Florida, and a Republican, Carlos, Carlos Curbelo, who was at that point a representative, a Republican representative from Florida. And together they developed the Bipartisan Climate Solutions Caucus in the House. It was launched in February of 2016. In order to join, a representative had to have a partner from the opposite party. Representative Fred Upton, our local representative in the sixth district in, from Michigan, joined the caucus in January of 2018 with his partner, uh, Jan Schakowsky, a Democrat from the Evanston, Illinois area. And our chapter was uh, worked hard on sending letters to let Fred know that he had our support for making that decision. The Climate Solutions Caucus in the Senate developed more recently in October of last year Senator Chris Coons of Delaware and Mike, um, and now Mike, Senator Mike from Indiana, his name is escaping me right now, joined together in October of 2019 and several senators joined soon thereafter. In February of 2020, four 
senators to Republican to Democrat joined and Senator uh, Debbie Stabenow joined in February of last year. As I mentioned, we go to DC or typically have gone to DC in June. This was the lobby team from Kalamazoo chapter last year as we were waiting outside of Representative Upton's office ready for our meeting with his staff. I'm going to show you a brief video that uh, is about all of the chapters, all of the delegates to DC volunteers meeting with their legislators. Today I'm lobbying Congress on climate change. Just being here in general makes me really excited. So uh, this is going to be really fun. I'm really excited to see what the outcome's going to be. This is kind of something I've always wanted to do, but it's really nerve wracking because it's such an important task and I feel like I have a lot of pressure because I really care about what I'm doing. So far the teams have been very supportive of my first time. It just feels exhilarating, just getting a chance to work together and it just changed lives. We all bring something to the table and uh, we all have our own talents and we all bring it together. We can really make a change. I feel pretty hopeful, just ready to go back to the district and continue to meet with them and continue to show up in their office and let them know that we're going to keep coming back. I just had a very successful lobby meeting and it looks like we may have co-sponsorship. It's so great to see just the positive response we've gotten to the bill and to CCL in general. It feels incredible. It was so unbelievable to hear that they will probably do it today. Thank you so much for sharing that video, Marianne. It's great to see members of our group participating in the political process. Next, I'd like to share with you how the Energy Innovation and Carbon Dividend Act works. It's three simple steps. The first is to place a fee on fossil fuels at the source. So the source would be the actual oil refineries or the coal mines is where the fee would be placed. This fee would start at $15 per metric ton of CO2 and raises to at least $10 per metric ton annually. Um, second would be to return all of the revenue to households equally. This means 100% of the net dividends will be allocated evenly to American households. And third would be a border adjustment. A border adjustment on goods imported from or exported to countries without an equivalent price on carbon would be to protect American manufacturing and incentivize other countries to follow our lead. Next, I'd like to share with you another short video that explains more about how the Carbon Dividend Act works and the importance of bipartisanship. Welcome to the far middle, that delightful headspace between the far left. Namaste. And the far right. Howdy. We like ideas from both sides of the aisle here and realize that when we hurt the other side, we're really just hurting ourselves. But when we hurt ourselves, we're also hurting the other side. Ow! Ow. It's only when we stop trying to hurt each other that we can solve big issues like climate change. Right, guys? I mean, I don't know that. I wouldn't say that at all. Definitely say something not. else completely. Here in the far middle, we support a climate change solution called the Energy Innovation Act. It's a national policy that addresses climate change without growing the size of government or destroying our modern economy. Let me explain. Nice one. That was clearly your fault. Okay, here we it go. It was on your side. My side's your doing side just fine over here. Let me explain. Fossil fuels are taxed at the source for every ton of CO2 they put into the air. Energy companies can still do business. They just have to pay a fee if they pollute the air because, well, we all breathe it. The collected money is split up and distributed to every American taxpayer, not the government. Hmm. Sounds reasonable. Yeah, that actually makes sense. So we all agree then? No. no. The money comes as a monthly check you can use to compensate for higher energy prices or use to invest in clean energy, which doesn't get carbon taxed. With clean energy on an equal playing field, the American free market gets kicked into an innovation frenzy to see who can create the cheapest, cleanest energy to get your business first. We literally can't even imagine what cool tech will pop up because it hasn't been invented yet. <laughs> cool. And some pretty big hitters support the idea of putting a price on carbon. 27 Nobel Prize winning economists, literally all living ex-Federal Reserve chairs, and over 3,500 other economists from across the country. Even oil companies like it. And like a gazillion nonprofits. Eat. I agree. Aw, bring it in, guys! <laughs> <laughs> the thing
thing is, we need your help letting Congress know climate change isn't a far left or a far right issue. Visit farmiddle.com to let Congress know that the far middle is alive and well, and that we want them to start working together, shoulder to shoulder, on climate. As you can see from that video, HR 763 is good for people, it's good for the economy, and it's revenue neutral because no money is going to be going to the actual government, it's all going into the hands of the citizens. Um, also, I think one of the most important facets is that it's effective. And now I'm gonna pass you on to Rick to talk more about that. Oh, thanks, John. The Energy Innovation Act would be effective in reducing greenhouse gas emissions. How effective? Emissions would be reduced by 31% in 10 years, or by 2030, and be reduced by 50% in 20 years, by 2040. And speaking of being effective at reducing greenhouse gas emissions, <clears throat> there is a new interactive educational tool available for free that demonstrates the many ways greenhouse gas emissions can be brought down. I'd like to show it to you now, and also show you how you can use it yourself. This tool is called the En-ROADS Simulator. It's a free, user-friendly climate solution simulator which you can interact with online. It was built by people from the Climate Interactive Nonprofit Organization and the MIT Sloan Sustainability Initiative. The simulator gives you the ability to explore the likely consequences of energy sources, economic growth, land use, and other policies and uncertainties. It combines the best science from around the world and advanced technology for learning. A lot of time, money, and brains went into developing this. As we look at the simulation dashboard, we see on the upper right, a temperature of 4.1 degrees Celsius, or 7.4 degrees Fahrenheit. This is the future increase in average temperature of the Earth by the end of this century, 80 years from now, when today's children are in old age. This temperature increase of 4.1 degrees is the scenario of maintaining the status quo of our current behaviors. It's a very bleak scenario and one that includes irreversible changes to the earth. The point of this simulator is to find ways to bend that blue line you see bend it down within a safe range, represented by the two gray dotted lines. You do this by selecting from 18 different actions on the control panel in the lower portion of the dashboard, and trying to bring that increase in global temperature from 4.1 down to one and a half to two degree range. Again, represented by those two gray dotted lines on the graph. That safe range is where our children and grandchildren could avoid the worst impacts of climate change. You'll notice one of the actions available on the control panel in the bottom left area is a carbon price option. Taking a carbon price action would be somewhat similar to what is being advocated by Citizens Climate Lobby. Economists believe carbon pricing would be effective as the best first step for climate action because it would bring positive results very quickly versus other actions such as planting trees, which would take much longer to bring results. I encourage you to find this simulator on the website of climateinteractive.org. That's climateinteractive.org. Watch the videos and how to use it to determine actions you can take or support locally in your home, school, city, state, and country. It's not a forecasting tool or something to make predictions. It shows the impacts of actions if taken on a global scale to help us understand the interdependencies of our actions and which actions have high impact or low impact and the impact of taking action sooner rather than later. This is a good way to get each of us to think about what am I going to do to change, address this challenge? John? Thank you, Rick. 
Next, I'd like to speak with you about how the Carbon Fee and Dividend Act is good for people. We know that when you burn fossil fuels, you also release other toxic substances that contribute to more air pollution, which shortens people's lives. So reducing emissions saves lives by preventing premature deaths associated with asthma and respiratory disease. You can see from this figure that 227,000 premature deaths could be prevented in 20 years with the carbon fee and dividend. Next, it's also good for people because it puts money in their pockets. Since the carbon fee increases steadily, the dividend also increases. A family of four would receive $288 per month after 10 years and $396 per month after 20 years. Under this plan, about two thirds of all households would break even or receive more in their dividend checks than they would pay in higher prices due to the fee, thereby protecting the poor and middle class from higher prices. In addition to being effective and good for people, this bill would be good for the economy. First of all, because it grows the gross domestic product. Now, initially, there might be no growth in the gross domestic process, product. Um, it's a tricky process to switch from an economy that gets most of its energy from fossil fuels to one that relies on greener, renewable energy. But very soon, there would be growth in the gross domestic product. And that would come in part because people will have the dividend in their piggy banks or pockets, and they can invest in whatever or, or use it for whatever they want. That will help to grow the grow, gross domestic product. Um, in addition, the industries that you saw in the video that are supporting this uh, sort of approach to climate change the energy producers like it because they know then what their investors are going to be dealing with. It's predictable to know that there will be a tax or a fee on fossil fuels uh, starting out at $15 per metric ton of greenhouse gas equivalent and growing over the years by 10 additional dollars a year. So within the early period, there'll be 70 to $85 billion of growth in the gross domestic product average. And after 20 years, we can expect $1.375 trillion growth in the gross domestic product. In addition, um, there will be jobs created. That will be good for the economy as well. Initially, a lot of those jobs might be in renewable energy. For example, one of the people who supports the bill locally is Mark Lee from Better World Builders. His company is going to be having more, more people employed as they work to increase energy efficiency of the homes in this community. So 2.1 million new jobs in 10 years and over 20 years as some of those additional innovative approaches to reducing greenhouse gas emissions are developed, 2.8 million new jobs over 20 years. That's it, the Energy Innovation and Carbon Dividend Act, a bipartisan climate solution. Here's its history. It was introduced on January 24th of 2019 in the U.S. House, and the next day it was referred to the Energy Subcommittee. You might know that our local representative, Brett Upton, is the ranking member of this subcommittee, so he has the power to influence to some degree what that subcommittee hears and works on. The bill now has 80 co-sponsors throughout the House. We're hoping for more. Several local businesses and community leaders have endorsed the bill. I mentioned Mark Lee. One I talked to uh, about the bill is George Todd from CalSec, an international company housed in Kalamazoo. And when he heard about the bill, he said, that's something I'd like to support. It helps our company do the right thing, invest more in renewable energy where the payback for that investment comes more quickly as the fee grows on fossil fuels. What do we need now? We need your help. Whatever group you fit into, whoever you are, um, we do need your help 
and you can start by visiting citizensclimatelobby.org. We'd love to meet you and have you join our group. We have uh, local meetings of the Kalamazoo chapter on the second Saturday of each month at 1 p.m. Um, we start at 1230 for a little bit of socializing and then join our national call at 1. Uh, and uh, that meeting happens at the Friends House on Denner Street in Kalamazoo. You can also register for CCL's virtual Earth Day event on Saturday, April 25th from 1 till 4. We're going to feature national speaker Catherine Hayhoe, who is a scientist and climate advocate uh, and Christian. She um, will also, uh, there will also be some breakout sessions and so you can register for that at citizensclimatelobby.org as well. We'd also like to invite you to explore the En-ROAD simulator at climateinteractive.org. Rick gave us an overview. You can actually flip those levers yourself if you'd like uh, by visiting that website. And again, it's completely free. If you have other questions, you can contact Tim Tesser, a local member, or Marianne Renz, as you've seen, met her in, in our video here. Um, and we have a few questions in the chat. So um, we'll look at those. Um, there's one, how would I get my dividend check and how much would I get? Uh, I can go ahead and answer that one real quick, Deb. Um, so uh, for the first part, how would I get my dividend check? So for your dividend, it would be directly deposited into your bank account. If for some reason you don't have a bank account, in that case, the money would be loaded onto a prepaid debit card and then mailed to your address. Uh, and as for the amount that you'll be getting, um, this is just an estimate based off a family of four. But in the first 10 years, you could expect the family of four to receive $288 per month. And after 20 years, you could expect to receive $396 per month. Okay. What data are you using to base the percentages for reducing greenhouse gases? That's an excellent question, Deb. Um, and remember that John talked about the integrity of the organization. We rely on studies that have been done uh, and get our data from that. Deb, would you paste in the chat the source for all of those studies for all of these figures? Um, sure. Because that's available. But I, I'd like to add to that. We've had studies done uh, by a well-respected, on both sides of the aisle, modeling company. REMI is its acronym, Regional Economic Modeling Incorporated. And it's from them that we get the figures about the effectiveness in reducing greenhouse gas emissions. We've also had a study about the uh, dividend distribution program and a study about the impact of the dividends, um, the household impact study. I'd like to mention also some work by Noah Kaufman. Uh, Dr. Kaufman is at the Center on Global Energy Policy at Columbia University. And in January of 2019, there was a lot of activity, a um, lot of proposals for climate action. Uh, Dr. Kaufman then looked at a number of them, and as he looked at what Citizens Climate Lobby had proposed, the fact that it has a moderate $15 per metric ton beginning and then gradually increases, but rather rapidly, uh, that steady increase in the price is what led him to conclude that our approach was the best of the choices there for increasing the effectiveness of the bill, that is effectiveness as a measure of the reduction in greenhouse gas emissions. Great. Um, there have been lots of pictures on the internet that show that air pollution over big cities is gone. If the smog comes back, 
couldn't we just clean it up with carbon capture? Well, carbon capture is something that we haven't developed fully yet. So that, that's something that's great. It will be a game changer when it's fully developed. And you can look at how impactful it's going to be at the climate interactive site. But you know, with carbon dioxide pollution, the kind of pollution that causes greenhouse gas emissions, we can't see that. So even if the smog is gone, there still are problems with climate change. Uh, and the best first step, as others have mentioned, is to reduce the greenhouse gas emissions quickly by putting a price on uh, carbon dioxide pollution. I'd like to add to that also <clears throat> regarding the carbon capture idea. There's, we have to resist the, uh, the feeling that there's a silver bullet or any just a couple of things that will fix everything. When you get into that climate simulator, you'll see that you'll need to actually pull all 18 of those levers in different forms. It's more like silver buckshot than a silver bullet. You have to really, uh, you'll understand that if you get into the simulator. There's, there's no easy fix. And CCL doesn't say that putting the price on carbon is the only thing that needs to be done just that it's going to be the best first step and we need, need to take it sooner rather than later. I would like to add one last thing as well. Um, these photos that we see of the reduced um, emissions over these heavily populated areas, um, it just goes to show you that if we take the right kind of actions that we can make a really big difference. So I think that it, it actually shows you know, the promise of us all working together to reduce these emissions. Great. Well, I've posted, I've posted all those links in our chat and uh, we hope everyone will be able to take a look at those and um, join us. Thanks to all of you for coming and all of you for participating.